Today I would like to present to your attention an incredible story of fearless samurai who must fight the hordes of horrible sea monsters to save an innocent girl on the infernal island Shinsenke. This story begins with Sagiri's nightmare of her father, who looks disappointed with her. After waking up, she sees a Simon Genji, who informs her that she was poisoned by the human-faced butterflies and lost consciousness. He also tells that they are safe in this cavern. A Simon is a samurai who is responsible for execution of criminals and testing new swords for the Shogun. Sagiri goes outside and is surprised to see Gabimaru preparing the dinner. A Simon Santa mends her torn clothes and Yuzuriha lies down on a hammock. Sagiri wonders why they spend the precious time on cooking instead of looking for the elixir of life. Gabimaru answers that he had reservations. Santa would like to discuss what they know about the island while eating the meal. Yuzuriha is eager to have a proper meal, but becomes disappointed because Gabimaru cooked Kikatsugan using various ingredients he found on the island. Gabimaru explains that he scouted out the island, but found nothing resembling the elixir of life, though he didn't search the whole island. Yuzuriha asks if Gabimaru knew something about this elixir. The shinobi lies, because he doesn't want to talk about Zenin of Iwagakure. Zenin is the highest rank of ninja with the greatest level of experience and skills. Shinobi is a skilled mercenary who is hired to carry out missions that involve assassinations and covert operations. Gabimaru recalls that the vegetation of the island is represented by a mix of familiar and unknown plants. He also believes that the missing participants of previous expeditions turned into flowers and plants. After thinking that Gabimaru had used some of those plants to cook Kikatsugan, Yuzuriha throws a piece of it at Shinobi. However, Gabimaru explains that he didn't use them and couldn't find anything like mandarin-looking fruit from the illustration. Santa believes that first of all they should find out who possesses the technology to create such statues and if the creators live on this mysterious island. Sagiri responds that people couldn't survive a long time on the island because of dangerous monsters and insects. Sagiri recalls that she didn't find any signs of organs within the monsters and draws attention to their strange appearance. Santa said that the items worn by the monsters are poorly made, so these creatures look like malformed deities in some kind of sick mandala. Gabimaru believes that these monsters are the proof of the existence of the elixir of life that helps him to get a pardon. However, Yuzuriha adds that they possibly already dead and this island is the afterlife. Santa explains that they should continue studying the monsters, because this is the best way to find the elixir of life. In the evening, Genji tells Sagiri to return back home, because he will assume responsibility of her assigned criminal Gabimaru. He believes that her first duty is to become a wife of the next head of the Yamada clan, and Sagiri is not capable to continue the mission since she has lost the katana, which is a warrior's heart. However, Santa doubts that it will be easy to leave this island, because only one person managed to do it. Meanwhile, Yamada Sai Montenza tries to escape the island with his assigned criminal Nurugai. Despite the fog, he continues to move forward, because this is the way of warrior. Nurugai says that it's not smart to exhaust himself, and a stubborn samurai should better read the currents instead of using brute force. Though Nurugai is a bit rude to Tenza, he's not offended and takes this as a wisdom of the people named Sanka. Nurugai's grandfather taught him that. Nurugai believes that he would still be executed even if he managed to get back home. A kind samurai promises that he will talk to the shogunate for Nurugai, since he is innocent and deserves to leave. Tenza is happy to see a large ship in front of them, but realizes very fast that it's wrecked and surrounded by other ships that didn't manage to leave the island. After detecting some strange activity, Tenza draws his katana, but Nurugai blames him for stupidity, because shining objects and hostility provoke the animals. A massive tentacle attacks and destroys their boat. Trying to find another boat, Tenza fights back from the tentacles. Nurugai believes that it's his punishment, and recalls how he tried to help the people who were lost in the forest, but was tricked by them. These samurai were sent by shogunate to murder his tribe, because the people of this region refused to obey the shogun. In a flashback, Tenza meets Nurugai in prison and offers him to join the Shinsenke expedition, because he believes that Nurugai has been wrongly sentenced. However, Nurugai doubts whether he should live as the last representative of the Sanka bloodline 
or died to atone for the death of his fellow tribesmen. In the present, Tenza looks at malformed Yamada Asaemon Kishu, who is infected with the poison of island's insects. One of the tentacles tears Kishu apart, and others surround the unlucky couple. Nurugai recalls his murdered grandfather and gives up on escaping. He tells his monitor to forget about him, since his mistake was a reason why his grandfather and fellow tribesmen died. However, Tenza continues protecting Nurugai and fighting off the tentacles. He cannot understand that and asks Nurugai again if he truly wants to die. In a short flashback, Nurugai enjoys a great time with his grandfather. In the present, he tells Tenza that he changed his mind and wishes to return home. A samurai gives one of his swords and points to the boat nearby. They start to fight off the tentacles together and manage to escape the monsters. Tenza and Nurugai discuss the situation and realize that they must find the safe current to leave this dangerous island. Tenza proposes to wash off the blood and notices that his new friend looks like a girl. Nurugai explains that she is actually a girl. Tenza becomes confused and asks her to turn around. However, she falls for his chivalry and offers him to get married when they return home. Anyway, Tenza comes up with a plan to check the island and find the perfect current. He also believes that they should gather allies for the return trip. Meanwhile, Genji tells Sagiri to sail home after dawn, but Santa believes that Gabimaru has changed for the better because of Sagiri, and she can stop him if needed. During the night, Sagiri visits Gabimaru who keeps watch. Shinobi asks her if she feels well after poisoning by insects, and confesses that she helped him to calm down and still he'll resolve to face any obstacle in his way. Gabimaru also admires how strong she actually is and encourages her with the words of wisdom from Iwagakure. In the end of the story, Sagiri has a conversation with Genji. He insists that she must leave the island and play her role as a daughter of the Yamada clan. However, Sagiri wants Genji to see her as a samurai and asks him to understand this. Genji mocks her and draws his katana, but Sagiri manages to snatch it from his hands and reminds him about losing the weapon on the battlefield. Experienced samurai becomes furious with her, but Sagiri is shocked to see Rokurota standing behind Genji and tries to warn him. He notices the scary giant and pushes Sagiri out of the way, but Rokurota is fast enough to make a fatal wound to his body. This video is based on the fifth episode, aka the samurai and the woman of a brand new supernatural anime, Hell's Paradise Jigokuraku. Release date April 1st, 2023. This dark fantasy anime is created by Studio Mappa and directed by Kaori Makita. If you are interested in previous episodes of this story, you will find them at the playlist in the end of the video. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe for videos like this. Please comment this video and share it with your friends. Thank you very much for watching.